abandon his approach and go to Nath's aid. But help was not needed. As Woolen approached the Canberra, the sabers chasing Nath turned out to be two Indian Air Force mistiers. Since Nath's sorties was kept secret from all formations, 230SU assumed Nath's returning Canberra was a PAF B-57 and scrambled two mistiers. With the confusion sorted out, the aircraft returned to their respective bases without further excitement. But not before Woolen's MiG flamed out due to fuel starvation and as he completed his landing run and taxied back. Ladies and gentlemen, Nath was to carry out more daring raids during the remaining days of the war, including a daylight mission on Quetta, right on the Pakistan-Afghanistan border, and a photoreki sortie on Badin. Unsurprisingly, at the end of the war, Nath became the first Indian Air Force officer to be awarded a Bar to Mahavir Chakra, an achievement that makes him the highest decorated living Indian Air Force officer today. As we wait for the events to unfold, let us acquaint you with the static display in front of you. On either side of the main stage, you can see two transporter and loading vehicles for the Pechora missile. The Pechora is a potent air defense surface-to-air missile system in our inventory. It is a short to medium range surface-to-air weapon. It can engage airborne targets up to a range of 25 kilometers and up to a height of 18 kilometers. On your left, ladies and gentlemen, along the entrance, you can see stalls put up for, to display Indian Air Force equipment. You will be able to see a low-level lightweight radar, or triple LWR. Manufactured by Elta Israel, it is a highly portable and mobile radar that can be deployed on any terrain to provide early detection of enemy aircraft. With a range of 60 kilometers, it can pick up targets up to a height of 6 kilometers, or approximately 20,000 feet. We also have the IGLA 1M missile system. The IGLA 1M missile system was introduced into the Indian Air Force in 1989 to defend a single vital point like Tropo Hub centers against low level aerial attacks. You can also see the elite Garud Force commandos along with their deadly ammunition. The Garud Force of the Indian Air Force was formed to provide a high degree of security and also carry out insertion and assault operations into enemy territory. Aero models put up by the Airwing NCC as well as publicity stalls of the Indian Air Force are also available. Here, information on all entry schemes for a carrier in the Indian Air Force are available. We would request you sincerely to pay a visit to these stalls at the end of the program. Our personnel will be more than willing to share information with all of you as required, and also it will be a great motivation factor for the young boys and girls of the National Cadet Corps. We now await the arrival of Air Officer Commanding-in-Chief, Southern Air Command, Air Marshal A.P. Garud, Air Marshal Arun Purushottam Garud, an alumnus of the National Defense Academy, Khadakwasla, was commissioned into the helicopter stream of the Indian Air Force on 29th December 1976. The Air Marshal has flown over 6,100 hours on various helicopters and training aircraft in his career spanning over 38 years. He is a qualified flying instructor, having undergone the flying instructor's course. He is an alumnus of the Defense Services Staff College, Wellington, where he subsequently served as a senior instructor. Ladies and gentlemen, Air Marshal Arun Purushottam Garud, Param Vishisht Seva Medal, Vayu Sena Medal, ADC, Air Officer Commanding-in-Chief, Southern Air Command, and Mrs. Sulochana Garud have arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, today's events have been organized in coordination with MTDC by Headquarters Maritime Air Operations or Headquarter Mao. The organization for joint planning, coordination and execution of maritime air operations began in the form of Air Force Element Joint Headquarters in 1957. After the 1965 Indo-Pak conflict, a larger organization, namely AOC Western India, was established in March 1967. Its tasks were to coordinate operation activities with both Army and the Navy on behalf of Air Officer Commanding-in-Chief, Western Air Command. 
On reorganization of the Air Force Commands, the policy page of AOC Western India was revised in 1971 and the unit was moved to Mumbai and was designated as Headquarter Maritime Air Operations. The headquarter was entrusted with the responsibility of coordinating operational activity with the Navy on behalf of Headquarter Central Air Command and later Headquarter Southwestern Air Command. Presently, Headquarter Maritime Air Operations is the sole organization responsible for coordinating joint operations of Indian Air Force with Indian Navy, and it has been upgraded to participate in standing group of committee of regional security arrangements and protection of Mumbai High along with prominence in security-related matters in the region. Presently commanded by Air Vice Marshal Anil Golani, Headquarter Maritime Air Operations has a dedicated set of air warriors who undertake all tasks unflinchingly. We are honored today by the presence of some of our veterans whose vision and tenacity of purpose nurtured a fledgling air force along the path of progress. The magnificent legacy that we have inherited is a tribute to their leadership and guidance. The Indian Air Force has reached this level of preparedness and training as a result of their perseverance and guidance. This evening, we extend a special welcome to them. The Indian Air Force's growth is a recognition of the inevitable rise of air power as a dominant and all-pervasive component of modern warfare. On the arrival of the chief guest, the national anthem will be played by the band. All present are to rise. The celebrations will start with a breathtaking display of precision with weapons by the famed Air Warrior Drill Team of the Indian Air Force. The display will then make way for the soulful rendition of orchestra music by the famous Air Warrior Symphony Orchestra of the Air Force. After a short set of music display by the Air Warrior Symphony Orchestra, we will then have a cultural program organized by the Mumbai Kathak Kendra and the Maharashtra Tourism Development Corporation. As the sunset dawns on the city of Mumbai, the flag lowering ceremony will be held. After this, we will once again enthrall you all with a dance performance by the children of Seva Southern, organized by the NCPA. All the cultural programs have been made possible by the personal initiative and interest of the Chief Minister, who we are grateful to. It is a testimony to the close relationship shared by the State Government and the Indian Air Force in the defense of the nation. After the dance performance, the famous Air Warrior Symphony Orchestra will once again take over to enthrall you and guide you to the culmination of the event. We now await the arrival of our honored chief guest, the Governor of Maharashtra. Born on 12th February 1942, Sri Vidya Sagar Rao was an activist of the RSS since childhood. After obtaining bachelor's in science, he obtained his LLB from Law College, Osmania University, where he was also elected as president of the Students' Union. He was actively associated with the Akhil Bharatiya Vidyarthi Parishad in his student days. Sri Vidya Sagar Rao started practicing law in the year 1973 in Karim Nagar. During the state of emergency in the year 1975, he was imprisoned under MISA for one year in Central Prison, Warangal District. He has served as president of Jansang and as president of the Janta Party, Karim Nagar District. He was elected thrice to the Legislative Assembly of Undivided Andhra Pradesh in 1985, 1989 and 1994 from Metapoli Assembly Constituency in Karim Nagar District. He was a floor leader of Bharatiya Janata Party in the Andhra Pradesh Legislative Assembly for three consecutive terms. Sri Vidya Sagar Rao was elected to the 12th Lok Sabha from Karim Nagar constituency in 1998 for the first time and was re-elected to the 13th Lok Sabha in the year 1999. In the very same year, he was elected as president of the state unit of the Bharatiya Janata Party. A senior Bharatiya Janata Party leader from Telangana, Sri Vidya Sagar Rao has served as Union Minister of State for Home Affairs and subsequently as Union Minister of State for Commerce and Industry in Government led by Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee from 1999 to 2004. Sri Vidya Sagar Rao took charge as Governor of Maharashtra on 30th of August 2014 and brings with him a vast and varied experience in public life.
ladies and gentlemen the honorable governor of maharashtra shri vidya sagar rao has arrived Ladies and gentlemen we will now have the national anthem kindly rise for the national anthem Devi aur sachno rashtragaan ke liye khade ho jaye Good evening ladies and gentlemen on behalf of air officer commanding in chief southern air command air marshal ap garud param vishisht seva medal vayu sena medal adc we welcome you all to this momentous evening wings of glory 2015 at the iconic gateway of india to commemorate the 50th year of the 1965 indo pak war organized by headquarters maritime air operations mumbai in coordination with mtdc today's celebrations shall honor the indian air forces heroes of the 1965 indo pak war and will be the city's way of paying homage and tribute to them this ceremony is part of a year long celebrations in marking 50 years of 1965 india pakistan war and would culminate on the 22nd september 2015 ladies and gentlemen this year The Indian Air Force commemorates the Golden Jubilee of the 1965 Indo-Pak War. This year, the Indian Air Force pays homage to the valiant men and their flying machines that played a significant part in the campaign and brought laurels to the nation. The Aerial War of 1965 started on 1st September when the Indian Air Force responded to an urgent call for air strike against the Pakistan Army in the Chambjuria sector. with a view to disrupting the lines of supply to our forces deployed in Jammu and Kashmir displaying outstanding professionalism and preparedness the indian air force was immediately available within an hour when called upon in support of the army on 1st of september 1965 the indian air force flew a total of 3937 sorties against the 2654 flown by the pakistan air force 335 tons of bombs were dropped during the campaign and 43 Pakistan Air Force aircraft were destroyed apart from damage to men and material on ground Wing Commander W M Goodman of 31 Squadron Wing Commander Prem Pal Singh of 5 Squadron Squadron Leader Padmanabh Gautam of JBCU Squadron Leader ABS Devaya and Squadron Leader J M Nath of 106 SR Squadron were awarded Mahavir Chakra A record number of 44 officers were decorated with Veer Chakra. While only a few names are being mentioned here, it in no way forgets the achievements, courage, and untiring efforts from all other awardees and other Indian Air Force personnel involved in the war. We are fortunate today to have amongst us Squadron Leader J M Nath, one of the four recipients of the prestigious Mahavir Chakra, the nation's second highest military honor. During the Indo-Pak War of 1965, Squadron Leader Nath was the flight commander with the Strategic Photo Reconnaissance Squadron flying the Canberra aircraft. 
He led his unit several times over the hostile territory to obtain vital information about the enemy. The unescorted missions, which were in the nature of reconnaissance, entailed flying long distances over the enemy territory and well-defended airfields and installations during daylight. Squadron Leader Nath was fully aware of the risk he was running on each of these missions. Still, he chose to undertake the risky missions himself. It was after great persuasion that he allowed his colleagues to do some of the assignments. The information gathered by him during his missions proved important to the Indian air effort. The missions enabled our air force to attack vital enemy targets and this adversely affected the enemy's war effort. Squadron Leader Nath was awarded Bar to Mahavir Chakra for displaying courage, determination and devotion to duty. Ladies and gentlemen, may we have a small round of applause for Squadron Leader, now Wing Commander, J.B. Nath Retire. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to begin the celebrations with a display of precision and perfection by weapons by the Air Warriors of the Indian Air Force's Air Warrior Drill Team. Please look out for the arrival of the Air Warrior Drill Team. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to guide you through a display of precision rifle drill by the Air Warrior Drill Team of the Indian Air Force. The Air Warrior Drill Team is a unique display team and the first of its kind in India. The, the team consists of 28 young and vibrant Air Warriors who have been handpicked for the desired task. The team has performed all over the country over the last 10 years. Officer in charge, Wing Commander Shukla, Team Administrator Flight Lieutenant Sheetal Sharma, along with an able team of instructors, Junior Warrant Officer Katiyar, Kapal Shivakumar and D. Rathor have been actively involved to bring up the standard of display which you will be witnessing in a short while. Today, ladies and gentlemen, the team will perform thrilling rifle movements in nine different formations. The motto of the team is drill to thrill. As the team leader marches forward to seek permission from our honorable chief guest, the team is ready to increase your heartbeats by their thrilling performance. Coming up, first formation, ladies and gentlemen, the V formation. From here, the team will advance forward to present their impressive rifle skills in a closer view to you all. I need not mention the 